Hello and welcome. Today we're going to show you how to make a funeral arrangement in the shape of a cross. As you see, I'm going to be using a metal cross shaped frame. This one is approximately 30 inches. However, there are various sizes that you can purchase at a craft store or at a floral supply store. We will be using some floral sponge as well as this floral plastic tape. While you may have access to this tape, you can also use a garbage bag as an alternative and this is easily accessible in your home. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this large garbage bag and as you see here it is pre-folded so I'm just going to take it and to section it off. I'm going to cut these sections and when I unfold these strips they're going to be very long and I'm going to use these strips to wrap the floral sponge and secure it to the metal frame. So as you see here you're just going to go ahead and section it off. We are going to be working with white and red flowers. I'm going to be using some red roses, some white carnations, some white spider mums, some orchids, baby's breath, salah leaves. This is entirely up to you what types of flowers you wish to use and what types of filler you wish to incorporate. Like I said, we're going to be using some Salal leaves, but also some baby's breath. So go ahead and section off the pieces. Once you have these pieces sectioned off, just cut them off so that they form these long strips, as you see here. It is very identical in texture to the floral tape that you would get at a craft or floral supply store, but you no longer need to go out and purchase it. So as you see here, I'm going to take this pre-soaked floral sponge and I'm going to section that off into quarters. So as you see here, it's going to work out to be approximately four pieces. Then you're going to take each of the four pieces and section them off into half. And this will form approximately the size and the depth that you will need to fill the cross. So you're going to go ahead and make sure that you have particularly uniform pieces. You don't want the pieces to be too various. You want them all to be fairly uniform, as that will make the process of securing the floral sponge to the metal frame easier. So as you see here, I'm going to go ahead and use these pieces of floral sponge to fill the metal frame. So as you see here, I used up about two pieces of standard size floral sponge to fill the frame. Do ensure that there aren't any breaks or gaps in the metal frame. You want to make sure that the pieces are as tightly packed as possible. You want to make sure that there are no gaps so that when you are putting your flowers in that the stems aren't hitting air and that they are secure in the sponge. This is particularly important since this arrangement tends to be used for several days at a time and since you cannot refill the sponge with water, you want to be particularly aware of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the pre-cut pieces of garbage bag here and I'm going to, as you see, start wrapping it firmly around the metal frame. You want to ensure that you're wrapping this very firmly. If you feel that it is necessary, you can go back a second time over the pre-wrapped pieces. Why this is important is that this will prevent leaking and it will keep the water and the hydration locked into the frame and into the sponge. So as you see here, as you get to the end point of the cross, you're just going to go ahead, wrap the excess and seal it with some tape. The trickiest part of wrapping the cross is the center piece. As you see here, I'm going to take one piece, wrap it around and create this X shape in the center. This will firmly bandage it um, as you see here. Do ensure that you're doing this part quite carefully just so that you again do not have a situation where the shape is being lost or that there is excessive water leaking through. Um, so do take your time but it's fairly easy overall so as you see here, you're going to do one half and then the other half and then complete it by finishing the top of the cross. And again, any excess should be sealed with some standard tape. 
If you do wish to wrap it a second time, just be aware that if you do, you're going to have to be a little bit more cautious when putting the stems into the floral sponge. You might want to take a knife and pierce through the, the plastic in order to give room for the stem instead of forcing the stem in. You don't want to break your flowers or cause any damage to them. So as you see here, I'm just going to go ahead, continue taking the segmented strips, and I'm going to finish the cross as you see. Do take your time with this. Do ensure that you're very tightly securing the plastic to the cross. This is essential as it will allow you to keep the form of the cross. It will allow you to keep the moisture inside of the metal frame and it will ensure that everything is secured and you have a very good working base for your arrangement. So once you have completed this component and secured all of the excess pieces, you can go ahead and begin to arrange your design. Usually, some individuals prefer to leave the bow for last or the ribbon, but I'm going to be putting the ribbon into the center. This allows me to visualize where the flowers are going to be placed and it allows me to be more economic with my use of the flowers because I will not need to put flowers in the center where the ribbon is placed. Instead, I can focus on the visible areas and I can use my flowers strategically there. So I can put my ribbon, fill that space, and work around it so that I'm not using more flowers than I need to use or more filler than I need to use. So I am using some of this wire ribbon and you can use whatever ribbon you prefer. And I have a technique here for creating my bows and we have a video on our channel if you do wish to check it out to see what technique I use to create my bows but if you have a personal technique feel free to use it to create your ribbon here. And I'm just going to put this together and I'm going to secure it with some metal wire. And I'm going to use that wire to wrap it around the center of the cross and secure it firmly to the back, as you see here. Do ensure you secure it very firmly. and adjust your ribbon as necessary. Once you have completed this step, you can go ahead and start arranging your flowers. Today I'm going with a very simple cross design. I'm going to be creating a very uniform symmetrical look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my rows, I'm going to cut my rows, and ensure that you're leaving enough stem length so that the rose is firmly in the oasis, but be mindful of the fact that you don't want the stem to be too long so that it pierces through the entirety of the frame and exits through the back because that means that number one, you have poked a hole through the frame and the stem is now exposed to the environment and it's going to dry up and dehydrate. So make sure that you're getting a good length, that you are securing the rows firmly inside of the floral sponge, but you're also not leaving the length too long so that it pierces through. So as you see here, you're just gonna go ahead and fill in and create that rose formation. This is an incredibly easy arrangement to make, and this is a very enjoyable arrangement to make in the sense that it is simple, it looks very elegant, it can be customized however you wish, and overall, it is really great for beginners, but the result looks quite beautiful, very traditional. So I'm just going to go ahead and place my roses. I'm using approximately 28 roses here. Of course, if you have a larger frame or a smaller frame, that number will vary. So just go ahead and set aside the flowers that you need. Be mindful that roses sizes and the dimensions that you're working within are going to differ. As you see here, if you have noticed, I am piercing a hole in the plastic with my knife so that I'm not forcing the floral stem through the plastic. And this is very important because you don't want to stab at the plastic. 
That way you're not hurting the flower, you're not damaging the flower, and you're ensuring that everything is being placed firmly. So as you see here, this is what the initial composition looks like. Next I'm going to take some spider mums as well as some carnations and I'm going to interchangeably place them varying one after the other to fill the exposed areas. If you have a carnation and it is particularly closed and you want to open it, you can just simply gently use your fingers to open up the petals of the carnation. Carnations are very resilient and if you are being mindful and gentle, you can open up the carnation to give it more fullness. So as you see here, that's what I'm doing. I very much prefer using carnations and spider mums in funeral arrangements and especially in arrangements of this specific design because I understand that usually funerals take the span of several days that you have visitations and then you have the flowers transported to the funeral home or the cemetery or a church. And because of this, you want flowers that can definitely withstand both that transportation and having to be without water for a particularly long time. As I've already mentioned, although there is a water supply inside the floral sponge that is being encased in this plastic, nevertheless, you cannot refill this water, you cannot add water, so you do want to take your time and ensure that you are using very sturdy, very resilient flowers. So here is what the design looks like once I have added my carnations and my spider mums. As you see here, I'm taking a carnation and a spider mum, and I'm interchanging them. Nevertheless, I'm keeping in line with the symmetry that I have created here. And as you see, it's a very easy arrangement to make as long as you're being cautious and handling the flowers gently, that you're piercing the plastic before inserting the stem, you will definitely have success in creating this. So as you see here, I'm just going to finish up a few more of these spaces and I'm going to move on to filling it with some of my selected filler. I have said this countless times before, but do, do not hesitate to customize this arrangement however you see fit. These are suggestions and ideas that you can work and play with and customize and interpret however you like. We're just here to provide you with some ideas and do feel free to experiment and play with your design. So as you see here, I'm just finishing off the last little portions and I'm going to go ahead and start filling in the gaps. Overall, as I have already mentioned, I have used about 28 roses, 25 carnations, and about 30 or so mums. This is a very rough number, and again, it depends on the size of the heads that you're working with, the size of the frame that you're working within, and the overall dimension. So this is just a rough estimation. Now I'm going to take some baby's breath and I'm going to place it underneath the flowers as you see here to give it almost an aura effect. So I kind of am looking to create this very beautiful, almost glowing effect and the baby's breath does allow for it to have this aura or halo. So as you see here, it has this very beautiful, delicate, um, and elegant look to it. Next, I'm going to take some Salah leaves and I'm going to continue to fill in the gaps because as you see here when I lift it, there is some visible black tape from the base and I want to fill that in. So I'm going to take the Salah leaf and as you see here, I like to cut the leaf right up to the head so that every time I am splitting up the segments, I have a long enough stem remaining for me to ensure that I'm using the entire segment of the Salal. Since the Salal leaves are a little bit more firm, you can, you can see I'm piercing it through the plastic, but that's just because I'm not terribly concerned. Um, the Salal leaves do have a very firm stem, and I can just go ahead and pierce through. As you see here, 
the leaves serve the purpose of both filling in those gaps, but also slightly lifting all of the flowers. It slightly lifts the baby's breath and the flowers to kind of give it a more forward facing effect. So salal leaves are great for this. So you're just going to go ahead and continue placing them, segmenting them, ensuring that you have a long enough stem. For the same reasons as I have mentioned prior, you want to ensure that the stem is firmly inside. This is going to be transported. It is going to be moved around. You want to ensure that nothing is falling off and coming off. There's nothing worse than having to transport an arrangement and then having things come apart or come undone. Finally, the next step to this is I'm going to create an additional little touch here. You can stop right here, but I want to take it a little bit further. And I'm going to create this ray effect with some dendrobium orchids here, as you see. I have selected some very fresh, beautiful orchids. I have approximately three stems, and I'm going to put them at each of the sides as though they are rays illuminating out of the arrangement. So as you see here, I'm just going to take these three pieces and I'm going to insert them at the sides. And it just adds a very unique touch and a beautiful effect, a cascading effect, a little bit more fullness, and I'm just going to go ahead and place it through the sides. As you see here, again, I'm poking it through because these particular orchids do have a thick stem and I'm not terribly concerned about breaking or snapping them, but if you are uncomfortable or if you have double wrapped your cross frame, do go ahead and pierce it through with your floral knife just to ensure that you're not breaking anything or snapping anything. As you see that I did it on that side, I'm also going to recreate it on the opposite side just to ensure that I am keeping with the symmetry of the design. So I'm just going to go ahead and place three more very full stems onto that side. This is again very customizable. Of course the colors and the flowers that you use are entirely up to you. So this is what the finished product looks like. You can mist it gently before transporting it. You can mist it uh, during the ceremony as well. What I like to do is I like to lift the arrangement up and keep it in a vertical position. If you have a stand, just hang it up on that stand. And what this is going to do is it's going to ensure that the water drains from the flower so that there is no drainage that takes place in the hall during the ceremony. This way it's going to drain, it's going to be good to go, and everything is going to be ready for the ceremony. This is the final product. Please leave any questions or comments below. Thank you so much for watching and see you in our next video.